biggest issue I have is I don't know what I'm supposed to care about. That isn't an opinion. It's a narrative criticism of the COD zombie game. In the Aether storyline, we knew the zombies were the bad guys because we want it to survive. Zombies are bad. Surviving is good. Anyone can relate to wanting to survive against a monster. Then the story changed from bad guy equals zombie to bad guy equals Nazi scientists. All right. This made things easier on the player to get on board with. Evil Nazi scientists making zombies with good intentions but poor consequences? Some of the worst things imaginable have been done with the best intentions. Easy to connect to. Then Treyarch says, Hold on to your butts. Now bad guy equals little girl. All right, what? What, what, what kind of little girl? An evil German little girl? Maybe like the girl from the ring minus the German part? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll pretend. I'll, I'm still on board. Then Treyarch's like, mm -hmm, JK ditching that weird girl thing. <laughs> we didn't mean that. We've hinted at that since like evil Nazi scientist time thing and literally just revealed her in the last map inside that pyramid. She's floating like a god and all that. Psh, no, no. Now the bad guy is an evil German scientist that <gasps> do, do the Boy, we got you good. So we, the players, can relate to wanting to get back at someone who has betrayed our trust. So we, the players, are on board with fighting Richtofen, but don't quite understand why the zombies are still attacking us when we can choose to be on his side. Strange detail. Uh, are the zombies still bad? Oh, yeah, I, I forgot to mention, another evil scientist is involved who's the dad of the floating German girl, but that no longer matters, remember? And he's trying to get us to do similar evil shit, but instead of doing it for the guy who betrayed you, you can do it with a stranger. Hmm? Hmm? Isn't that better? Who cares about that saying, better the devil you know than the one you don't? Am I right? Old people, dead people say that. <laughs> I don't listen to them. Then at the end of the saga, we find out that neither the evil German scientists are good. Oh my, who could have known? I'm shocked. No matter what, we do get a poop ending as players. The world ends and we die. Whoop, whoop. From the one depressed guy that likes dying. That's all the way up until the end of Black Ops 2. Then Black Ops 3, we find out there's a new bad guy in town. Oh, and it's a ringer. Staying in the dark lit alley at a whopping who knows, weighing God knows what, it is the Cthulhu and his Shadow Man. That's right. New bad guys are hentai monsters. Hentai monsters everywhere. Now get this. They were actually the evil the whole time. That's right. Not the zombies. Not the scientists. Not the godchild. But the hentai monsters are the bad guys. <sighs> to prove this, Treyarch has a different timeline. And definitely not a fan fiction rewrite of the COD Zombie storyline so far. <laughs> they are cool now. Have American accents and neat giant robots. Look, not bad guys. This is where I think fans will start having uh, some issues with the old, why do I care? In the Call of Duty Zombie storyline. Wait a moment. We are talking about the chaos story. Hold your horses. Hold. This is all to prove a point. Well, we got through most of Black Ops 3, only introduced this other guy, who's apparently God, but not really God, named Dr. Monty, who isn't really a doctor either. Basically, whatever we are told about this dude, it isn't true. In one map, he convinces us to kill the Shadow Man and Hentai Monsters because our main players side with people who insult them. Must be like a leftover trait from the Ultimus crew. Again, I remind you, one map! Monty pops in, and we're like, cool, sounds good. And Monty's like, just like that, no questions. And the Primus group kind of just like shrugged, and they're like, I mean, we believe whatever that uh, Rick Toffin guy says. Rick Toffin! Rick Toffin! Rick Toffin! Rick Toffin! Anyway, they destroy the Shadow Man, only to have players start the next game with the ingenious title of Black Ops 4 to learn that Dr. Monty is the real bad guy. Wait, what, what the f***? We have 10 years, 28 maps in. We're changing the guy 
bad guy again? Holy sh! What is going on? How would any player be expected to care about these stakes? The zombies were the original bad guys. How the hell did we get hentai monsters and a god that hates us as an enemy? So read up. What's your point? My point is, even in the storyline we care about, we really don't have a clear narrative reason to care about the outcome of the world. Who cares if anything's solved? Well, in fact, our lives, and there's no stakes, there's no emotional commitment there. That leads to the chaos storyline. The current issue is there are no clear antagonists to the storyline, and the protagonists aren't easy to like on purpose. I shit you not. I had the chance to talk to the lead writer, Craig Houston, at the Black Ops 4 reveal event, where he told us he's good at writing broken characters. He's going out of his way to make them broken. <laughs> Oh, woo! Reed, how is there nothing to care about? Let's uh, analyze it. Who are the bad guys? What are the stakes? We are supposed to be against the Order. A mysterious group of people who do uh, bad things, we think. I mean, we see them having slaves and supposedly sacrificing all these bodies in nine, but we don't really know if those are innocent people. In Voyage, they are just weird cult people that tap a little trophy. And in Dead of the Night, they kidnap a crazy old man who wants the same power they do. What do they do? Do they turn a lot of people into zombies? But remember, we are 10 years removed from that being a bad thing. Zombies just happen to be in the game at this point. It's a mechanic we play in in 2019. The worst thing so far is the order mind controls a butler to kill other players that we sort of liked. So that's bad. But then again, I'm not sure what the artifact does. That's the thing that turns people into zombies. Yeah, but in the last comic book, Scarlet comes to the mansion after the trial. Everyone's dead. Wait, wait, why? Is it because they failed? On Voyage, our characters survived the trial. Everyone's all right. Survived the Titanic. Yeah. But in the last comic book, Scarlet comes to the mansion after the trial and everyone's dead. Wait, wh why? Why? Is it because the main characters failed? Do the people actually die? Are they actually turned to zombies? What are the rules of this world? All right, well, the order seems bad enough. Right, fine. And the motive is to get something powerful. Wait, we don't even know what they want to do with it. The only indication we have from the game is they want to do something terrible from Knockoff Maxis and uh, about to die Scarlet. Knockoff Maxis claims it will destroy the world. Well, shit, aren't we a little desensitized to end of the world claims? How the heck are players supposed to care that the other group of people are going to destroy another world we barely know? How many times have we heard this story? Where are the stakes in world destruction? May I remind you, we have failed to save the world, uh, here, here, oh, and here. Even in the game we are playing, we have already had these stakes three times, and we have failed all three times. We have probably saved it a few times in there, the Ether storyline too, probably, right? But who knows anymore? Okay, so what keeps the Ether storyline together through all the narrative issues? The characters. Our love for the characters, our bonds with the characters, had made us want to see their stories through, even if the goal is unclear. We're trying to stop the zombies, the evil Germans, die monsters, God? Who cares? Let's see Dempsey find his home, Nikolai his family, Tokyo his honor, Richtof in his redemption. What kind of characters do we have to get us through the weak antagonist with no clear problem? First is Alistair Rhodes, a deadbeat dad who is a thief who has used his 12-year-old daughter as an accessory to a crime, treated his Alfred-like butler like crap, is known to travel the world as a rich, arrogant scientist who is certain he's on a crusade to save the world, and no matter how much anyone in the comics, in-game, or in the radios try... They can't understand why Alistair can't share the conflict of the story with them. Alistair must be scared, arrogant, or stupid in his inability to not let others know what the hell is the problem, why it's a big deal, and how is the order to blame? Just saying it's the end of the world doesn't really get the point across. For the main characters, I will be brief. Bruno is an ex-gangsta who is resurrected by Rhodes during a shootout. Diego is a womanizing, lying, prideful spy who is a proven dirtbag in the comics. He also lives by whatever his moral code is, which is a little terrifying. Shaw is a drug addict who seemingly caused his wife to leave him. I'm sure Treyarch will turn that around to some tragedy later on, but who knows. And he can't tell what is reality. But on the bright side, he's good at making chemical weapons. You know, 
One's the Geneva Convention Band for Human Rights. And finally, our girl Scarlet, who I liked the most up until the last comic, was Indiana Jones, headstrong, take no shit, abandoned child who made her own name for herself in spite of her deadbeat dad. Well, what's not to like about Scarlet? Well, good person who identifies as whatever you say, thanks for asking. According to issue four of the official Call of Duty Zombie comic book, Scarlet is a murder hobo. She's Nathan Drake level of killing. You're locked in here with me. Diego is a trained spy. Shaw is an addict and chemical weapon maker. Bruno is a goddamn gangster. They all have motivation to kill. But Scarlet, she's got daddy issues. Oh, shit, Scarlet, stop, stop. Ah, Scarlet, Scarlet, ah, Scarlet, stop, stop, Scarlet. Oh, oh, she's just going around the woods, just killing away. She just met these people. She could have run away. She literally says she knows these woods better than them. She has no idea who they are in the context of her story. Besides a letter of warning she receives from her Ted beat dad that hasn't spoken to her in 15 years. Is that all it takes for Scarlet to go killing? The original crew were... Goddamn soldiers during the worst conflict in modern history. Oh, oh my God. No, Scarlet. No. What the hell is wrong with Scarlet showing up to the mansion after Dead of the Night? Why did she have to go full murder hobo in the comics? I still don't know what the Order has truly done bad. I have seen the main crew kill more people than the Order in game and in the comic books. I think that's a huge disconnect. Especially since they made it a point that Alistair Rhodes never really tried to kill anybody, any of the real people, in the comics. Pretty big detail. It is implied the Order killed hundreds and nine, but we actually see maybe, what, 20 people turn to zombies? Sheesh! At the end of all these thoughts, I ask, who are we supposed to root for? Who is the bad guy? And what's the main conflict? If these answers are Scarlet's crew, the Order, stop the end of the world, uh, oh, I need stronger motivations. To care about the villainous protagonists. I need real clear motivations about the Order's nefarious wrongdoing, and I need to know why it matters if the world is destroyed or not. I'm not attached to anything inside the Chaos world, so what if it ends? But hey, that's an analysis on the internet, a non-game theory analysis that 90% of people will ignore and call this video a, a big hate piece. I think the new story has potential. I want it to succeed, and I was rooting for Scarlet, Probably up until comic number four there. You dirty murder hobo, you. I don't care about that throwaway line about having nightmares after killing them. There was no hesitation. There is something there in the chaos story. That could be super exciting, but we need reasons to care. I'd like to hear your respectful responses in the comments below. Is that wishful thinking? Probably. Please be respectful to me, but more importantly to the devs. I know it's easy to blame someone for why things aren't going well, but don't scapegoat anyone. It doesn't help anything, and I'd rather we discuss in a beneficial way. Subscribe and hit that darn bell for more character narrative and game analysis of all sorts of games. This stuff is more fun to me now, so stick around for more than spoon-feeding about the complex zombie storyline. Join my Discord community if you want to talk with other avid fans. Check me out on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for live streams that turn into game reviews. What? Resident Evil 2 is coming, and I want you to try to have a great day. Thanks for choosing to watch one of my videos. That's really cool of you. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.